Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to explore with you the two options you have in Logic for pitch correcting your performances. So this comes in the form of a real-time audio effect, the pitch correction plugin. So you load it on a track and it reacts in real time as the audio plays back, correcting the pitch along the way versus flex pitch, a system that allows you to work on a note per note basis, correcting things like pitch, pitch drift, vibrato, these really nuanced details. So I should point out both of these options are for monophonic signals, meaning a voice or an instrument performing one note at a time, not a group of voices, not a chord, one voice or instrument, one note at a time. Inevitably, most of us will run into a recording that could use a little help in the pitch department, which begs the question, which option is the best option for your particular situation? That's what today's video is all about. I want you to listen to the first two lines of this vocal alongside a rhythm guitar track. And I want you to just kind of hone in on what could stand a little improvement. Take a listen. Well, pictures on my floor, posters on my ceiling. I always think it's a good idea to have another instrument in the mix as you're working on pitch correcting a performance because having another melodic instrument will help anchor your idea of what good pitching sounds like for your production. It could be a guitar, a piano, a bass, it doesn't really matter what it is, just something else. All right, for this vocal, I think the first line, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but I'm actually quite happy with the performance. And generally, you don't want to pitch correct every note of a performance. You just want to get the stuff that sticks out. In that case, the second line is where things start to stick out. Posters, that word specifically, the second half of it, is definitely hitting a wrong note. And the word ceiling at the end of the second line is a little pitchy. Let me mute the guitar track and let's hear the vocal by itself. Well, pictures on my floor, well, posters on my ceiling. Right, posters, definitely hitting a wrong note, ceiling, a little pitchy. So a perfect scenario for doing some pitch correction. So what I'm going to do first is load the pitch correction plugin in the first slot on this channel strip. And of course, I'm going to type in the title and just hit return to load the plugin. This is a brand new feature since Logic Pro 11.1 for Mac. And taking a look at the pitch correction plugin, it's very clear that you can see all 12 notes in the chromatic scale, starting with C, going up to B, including all the sharps and flats along the way. Before I go any further digging into the controls, I want you to watch and listen to what the pitch correction plugin is doing to the vocal as it is right now. Take a listen. Well, pictures on my floor, well, posters on my ceiling. Okay, so you can see a white dot bouncing around, right? It's bouncing across all 12 notes wherever the vocalist is landing. And where we see the white dots land currently is being shown to us based on this show pitch option. With input selected for show pitch, we're seeing the white dot bounce to the notes where the vocalist is actually landing before any pitch correction is occurring. Whereas we could see the output for the show pitch, in this case, the white dot shows us what the vocalist now is hitting in terms of pitch after the pitch correction. Well, pictures on my floor, well, posters on my ceiling. To the right of the note display, we have a correction meter that shows us how much correction is occurring on a note per note basis. Now, in its current state, the pitch correction plugin is actually not contributing a whole lot. I would actually say it's actually hurting the performance. The word poster and ceiling are not being corrected. They still sound out of tune. And the other words in the phrases actually sound a little worse. That's because currently every single note of the 12 notes are highlighted, meaning that if the vocalist falls on any one of these 12 notes, his performance will be pulled closer to those notes which is what I want, but all 12 of these notes are not in the scale of this song. Posters is being pulled to an A sharp, which is not part of the scale. I could manually disable the notes that are not part of the performance. When I disable these notes, the pitch correction plugin will skip over them and pull the vocalist closer to the notes that are highlighted. Well, pictures on my floor. Well, posters on my ceiling. But what I recommend that you do is identify the root note 
as well as the scale of your song. This will tell the pitch correction plugin that certain notes are not part of the scale and should be avoided when pitch correcting. Of course, you'll need to figure these details out for your song, so it will require a little bit of musical knowledge or a third-party solution. For this performance, I'm going to use a third-party plugin from the developer Antares. I'm going to load it onto the guitar track here, and it's called Auto Key. Because when I hit play, Auto Key is going to listen and analyze the melody, the harmonic content in this guitar to identify the root note and scale. <laughs> All right, auto key determines that this song is possibly most likely in this key and scale of A major. That sounds good to me. So I'm going to close the plugin, mute the guitar, and set the root note in the pitch correction plugin to A and the scale to major. All right, so now we know which notes are actually in the scale that the performer needs to be hitting in terms of his performance. Let's now hear the vocals with these changes. Well, pictures on my floor, well, posters on my ceiling. All right, doesn't really sound better, right? So we're gonna have to dig into the other parameters in the plugin, starting with the neural pitch detection button. This is a relatively new feature for the pitch correction plugin, and this is leveraging the neural engine on Apple Silicon machines. This replaces the pitch range parameter, which you can see is currently grayed out, but for those of us on Intel machines, you'll see the pitch range enabled and the options are between normal and low. For most use cases, you're gonna to wanna to leave this set to normal, but for those of us who are trying to pitch correct an instrument performing very low notes, such as bass signals, you'll choose low. Next is the response time, which literally is how fast or slow the pitch correction plugin responds to the incoming audio. Generally speaking, the more obvious you want the pitch correction to be, the faster you set the response time. For example, if you're looking for that auto-tune sort of effect, you'll set the response time to as fast as possible. Well, pictures on my floor. Well, posters on my ceiling. Gotta say, that's actually pretty cool. But I'm looking for a more natural performance. So generally speaking, you'll want to set the response time a little slower. So the pitch correction plugin isn't latching on the notes as quickly. Well, pictures on my floor. Well, posters on my ceiling. Next up is the tolerance control, which is literally how tolerant is the pitch correction plugin to pitch variations. This is great for two reasons. One, if you have a performer who's a great performer and they're adding pitch variations on purpose, such as vibrato, meaning that they're wavering a note intentionally. In those cases, you don't want the pitch correction plugin to latch on and try to pitch correct those minor variations. So you can increase the tolerance so it's less likely to clamp down on every single variation. Well, pictures on my floor. Well, posters on my ceiling. But number two, if you have a performer who is not necessarily hitting every note exactly as they should, and they seem to have to spend some time finding the note before they hit it, you may want to decrease the tolerance. Well, pictures on my floor. Well, posters on my ceiling. Okay, so in all of these cases, we're hearing the pitch correction plugin respond. Some settings are better than others, but not all of the time. So in some cases, you may need these parameters to change over time. In this case, I'm gonna automate the controls. I'm gonna show automation. First, I'm gonna bring in the bypass all control. And for the first line, I'm going to choose to just bypass the pitch correction. Next, I'm going to automate the tolerance control for posters. So I'm gonna leave this set to zero cents and maybe I'll increase it for the rest of the phrase. Let's take a listen. Well, pictures on my floor. Well, posters on my ceiling. Maybe I want it for the whole phrase. Well, posters on my ceiling. The only thing I chose to really automate in this case, because I can get rid of 
the tolerance here is the bypass all for that first line. But take a listen to the before and after here. I'm going to bypass the pitch correction plugin. We're going to listen to that second line and then I'll bring it back and we'll listen again. Well, posters on my ceiling. Well, posters on my ceiling. Right, posters is definitely changed. Well, posters on, well, posters on my. Right, so I've made some improvement. I would not say that I've made tremendous improvement. Personally, I think of the pitch correction plugin as a good general tool. Generally speaking, if you're looking for a more obvious effect, the pitch correction plugin can be great. Or if you have a performance that's 99% there, it's just a couple words that could use a little help. If you are just looking for a little glue, it's great. But that brings us to flex pitch. So I'm going to bypass the pitch correction plugin and I'm going to show flex view in the tracks area. And I'm going to enable flex. And of course, I'm going to choose from the drop down in the track header for the vocal, the flex pitch mode. With flex in view here in the tracks area, we see what looks like MIDI information, MIDI blocks splayed across what looks like the piano roll, noting each of the notes in the chromatic scale. And you can edit with flex pitch right in this view. Just by clicking, holding, and dragging on one of these blocks, we can change the pitching of this performance. As well, if you hover your mouse over any one of these handles around a note, you can fine tune specific aspects of each note. I personally prefer to work in the audio track editor. So I'll go up to the editor button here to bring it up. I want to make sure that I'm in the track tab. And if you don't see flex in this view, you just click on the flex view button here in the editor. All right, so we're going to focus on the second line because that's where most of the action needs to occur. Starting with the word posters. Well, posters on my... It's very clear that's hitting the wrong note. It's an A sharp here or B flat. If we open the pitch correction plugin, we know A sharp is not part of the A major scale. So I'm going to drag this note to the semitone below, to A. Let's hear it. Well, posters on my... Okay, I've corrected it, technically speaking, but it sounds odd. It sounds a little too low. I could try double-clicking on the note to snap it exactly to an A. Well, posters on my... But it still sounds kind of weird. So I'm going to play with some of the other parameters for this note. First, I'm going to set the fine tune here a little higher, a little pitchy, not too much, but just a little. Next, I'm going to play with the vibrato because there's a bit of a waver to the note. Let's take a listen. Well, posters on my... Okay, quite a bit better. I also want to play with the pitch drift in and out. Basically, I'm trying to even out the note because when I had the pitch correction plugin open, you could see that the note wasn't staying on an A. It was bouncing between some other notes. Well, posters on my ceiling. All right, way better in my opinion. Of course, these three other notes are clearly a little pitchy, as noted by the negative space here. Now, I'm not too sure which notes should fall in the A major scale, so I'm going to select all three notes. I'm going to go over to the scale quantize option here in the inspector in the editor and select A major. And now I'll choose to use the pitch correction slider and I'll bring it up to about 70, 80%. Let's take a listen. It's on my ceiling. All right, definitely better. If we hear the whole phrase, well, posters on my ceiling. We're almost there. I'll bring up the scissor tool to split up this climb here because it's sounding a little weird. I want to make sure to quantize to A. And I'll also play with the vibrato again for each of these notes.
For the last note, the vocalist kind of dips down in his performance, so I'm going to increase the pitch drift. All right, let's hear it. Well, posters on my ceiling. Of course, we're in a forensic mode. We're not even hearing the vocal alongside any other melodic instrument. Let me bring back the guitar. I'll hit play, and we'll hear the vocals corrected for these two lines. Well, pictures on my floor. Posters on my ceiling. I think that sounds way better. And of course, there are little details that are poking out at me. I would dive in, but I just want to show you a quick layman's version of how to use the pitch correction plugin in Flex Pitch and why you might choose to use each. Today's video is not about showing you that one is better than another. It's simply to say, here are the tools. This is how to use them. Some things to keep in mind. So I hope today's video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to Wide Logic Pro Rules here on the channel and on the website, and be sure to check out the description below where I always include links to PDFs, guides, and templates to help you in your journey with Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.